Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where today we are talking about Arsenal and Mikel Arteta. And as you would have seen in the thumbnail and title, the main thing we are focusing on is three players that Arteta could sign for Arsenal this summer to take them to that next level to get them over the line to win the league next season. But before we do that, we need to look at what they've done so well last season. So in the season that has just finished, Arsenal set up a little bit like this in a 4-3-3. And this was their sort of average 11 with Ramsdale in goals, Zinchenko, Gabriel, Saliba and Ben White making up the best of the back four. Thomas Partey, Xhaka and Odegaard in midfield. And then Martinelli, Gabriel Jesus or Nketiah and then Saka on the right wing. This was Arsenal's 11. And of course, the way that they set up was very often a 3-2-4-1 shape. We saw Zinchenko from left back often moving towards a double pivot and then Gabriel, Saliba and Ben White would form a back three, allowing Odegaard and Xhaka to push up into the half spaces as two advanced eights. And this is what Arsenal done very well. Now, of course, they had loads of rotations in the team, but this was kind of the average shape, the average system that they looked to use. Now, the reason that this was so successful is because they had technicians all over the pitch. Saliba, uh, Ben White, for example, are both really, really good on the ball. Zinchenko as well, Odegaard, Saka, Martinelli, and Jesus up top. These were the real technicians of the team. We have Gabriel and Xhaka probably being the two, which weren't quite of the technical level of the others. Maybe Thomas Party to an extent as well, although he is still very good on the ball. But Arsenal had technicians all over the pitch. The other thing they had all over the pitch was physicality. We can see that by having three centre-backs on the pitch, they have a nice big team. Thomas Partey in midfield as well is a very physical presence, and so is Xhaka as well. Over six foot tall, very strong, loves a duel. So this meant that Arsenal had technicians all over the pitch, but also physicality. Now on top of this, in terms of the system that they had, the back three kind of provided the platform to build possession. The box, in, the box four in the midfield overloaded most teams. We saw the whip from Saka and Martinelli, and then the goal scoring from Jesus up top. That was roughly how Arsenal looked to play. Now, all of these things led to Arsenal having a pretty good season, you know. Martinelli and Saka had really good seasons out wide in their one versus one ability, but also their combinations with players like Odegaard and Xhaka, but even Ben White around them. And it allowed Arsenal for large parts of the season to play really good football. However, they just dropped off towards the end of the season and they couldn't quite match the pace of Manchester City. That needs to be addressed moving forward. So what can Arsenal do moving forward to close the gap to Manchester City while still keeping their key principles. For example, if they were to replace, let's say, someone like Thomas Partey in the team, they need to have the same attributes as Partey had, but also be a better footballer as well. All the same for someone like Granit Xhaka. We know that Xhaka has now left the club. Arsenal need to replace what he brought to the team, but also upgrade it as well. That is a difficult challenge for Arteta this summer, but I have three players which I think will do it. But first, we need to look at three areas that actually need improving. So for me, the first thing that Arsenal need is a new fullback. Probably someone to be a bit of a squad option, a backup player. Tomiyasu is currently the only option that can do that. Of course, that currently Zinchenko and Ben White are their main two fullbacks. If one of them get injured, Tomiyasu comes into the team, with Tierney looking like he will probably leave the club. So Arsenal need another fullback which can come into the team and be inverted. On top of this, they also need someone which can be quite physical, particularly if they are going to be replacing Ben White at times. They need someone who can be versatile, playing as both a traditional fullback and also an inverted fullback. Again, they need that physicality. They need technical security on the ball, like the rest of the team has. And also, from a defensive point of view, they need to be good in their one versus one battles, particularly dealing with the counter-attack. And this is an area where Arsenal could upgrade their team. Ben White isn't great in one versus ones and neither is Zinchenko. So we need to find a fullback in Europe or just anywhere in the world really, which ticks all of those boxes which I've just said, but is also at a stage in their career where they are probably content with being on the bench for now. But I have an option for you guys, so let's check it out. So the option that I am going to suggest for this fullback position is Fred Nado. He's a very young Spanish footballer who's really been kind of breaking onto the scene this season. Been linked with a loads of different clubs this summer. He is the big next thing at fullback in my opinion. He looked really good. He's really very technical. He's very good on the ball. He's very physical, kind of in that new mould of player we're starting to see. These players which are over six foot tall, but still really technically gifted. He's very good with his passing, he can play at left back, he can play at right back, he can play at right centre back in a three. He's good in his one versus one defending ability. For example, I watched him against Real Madrid and I thought he'd done a pretty good job against Vinicius Junior, which, you know, it's not a bad player to measure yourself against. So for me, Fresneda is the player that I would be looking to bring into this Arsenal team. Because then what it allows Arsenal to do is use Fresneda as a backup right back in replacement of Ben White in this position and then Tomiyasu can play as depth to Zinchenko. So now Arsenal go from having no depth at fullback to suddenly they've got two very capable players in each fullback position who can come in and play the same role. Currently if Tierney comes into the side the structure of the team completely changes. So if we push Tomiyasu to a left back position inverted 
and Fresneda comes in at the right back position, Arteta can change his team, freshen his team up with energy, without having to change the system. So that is why Fresneda should be signed. So before we continue into the video, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, JerseyFIFA.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that be the new latest releases or the old classic ones like this, Jersey FIFA has something for everyone and now you can check it out yourself using the link in the description down below. And also make sure to use code JERSEYFIFA for 10% off when you order. The other area where I would like to see improvement in this Arsenal team is in the midfield. If we look at their midfield 3 of Thomas Partey, Granit Xhaka and Odegaard, we can see that past that they really don't have much depth. Jorginho has left the club, Fabio Vieira doesn't really look ready just yet, and ja uh, Granit Xhaka has also left the club. So... Arsenal are desperate for a midfielder, but rather than addressing those higher problems, first of all I want to address the problem of Thomas Partey. And that might sound a little bit odd, but this is a position that I would be targeting for Arsenal this summer. But the main reason being, Thomas Partey's kind of ability on the ball dips slightly. In the biggest moments, he isn't that calm head you always need, but also his availability is a problem. He had a lot of injuries over the past couple of seasons, and you know, you're only as good as you are available. Whilst he isn't available, he's useless as a footballer. So Arsenal need a new player for this position. The question is kind of, what sort of profile do they need? Well, they need to have the physicality which Thomas Partey has. They need to have a better passing ability than Thomas Partey, someone who can bring a control and a composure to the team. Leadership qualities are also very important in this side, with someone like Granit Xhaka leaving and other players as well. There needs to be a real leader in this team in the midfield. They also need to be physically strong and physically tall to deal with a lot of the battles, helping Arsenal maintain their physical nature in the team. Whilst in general, they also just need to be a very good defender or a very good player from a defensive point of view to protect the defence, particularly on the transition. So, who is the best option? Well, let me tell you, it's someone who has been linked to the club non-stop this summer Declan Rice. Declan Rice ticks every single one of those boxes. He's absolutely brilliant on the ball, he's better than Thomas Partey in that aspect, he brings more press resistance and his passing range is much better, and he also has a better understanding of slowing the game down at times. He also offers something different in the sense of carrying the ball forward at times, but then also importantly, defensively, he wins pretty much all of his duels. We know how well he gets about the pitch, he brings that height, he brings that physicality, he is experienced in the sense uh, that he's played a lot of minutes for such a young player. And also, this is the sort of leader which Arsenal need in their team. Like I said, with someone like Granit Xhaka leaving this team, Declan Rice is needed in this midfield. This is the one signing for me, above all the others, which Arsenal need to make. So finally, the other position which Arsenal need to strengthen is this Xhaka spaced hole. Now, like I said, Granit Xhaka has already left the club. He is gone. So Arsenal need a new midfielder for this position because in my opinion, the likes of Fabio Vieira and even Smith Rowe just aren't ready to play this position. Not week in, week out. So Arsenal need a new player for this position. But what do they need to bring? Well, they need to bring a lot of the traits of Granit Xhaka. And that was the real, the drive up and down the pitch, the physicality, the ability to cover a lot of ground. Again, a physicality to, to the way which they play, being that bit of strength in the attack. But ideally, you want someone who can be a bit more technical than Granit Xhaka. Because at times he was floored by his, his poor turning radius and things like that when he receives the ball. So we need someone who offers the same defensive output, if not better. But also someone who's a bit better on a ball, a bit more technical, better at dropping deeper into these areas and kind of playing one twos with teammates, then moving towards the final third, where the impact isn't quite as important. So who ticks those boxes? Well, again, it's another player that Arsenal have been linked with. It is Caicedo of Brighton. Now, currently, he is being heavily linked with Chelsea. But if I was Arsenal, if I was Arteta, I would be doing everything, and I mean everything in my power, to try and stop that deal from happening. Because Caicedo, once again, ticks every single box of what Arteta wants. He's versatile, he can play in several different positions, which we know which Arteta likes in his side, as we've seen with Declan Rice and Fresnado already. From a technical point of view, he is better than Granit Xhaka at receiving the ball on the turn, he's better with his short passing, he's better at keeping the ball, and he's also better at dictating the tempo. But importantly, defensively, he still brings the same intensity, he still brings the same physicality, he's happy to press high, he's happy to track back, uh, track back and he's one of the best ball recovering midfielders in the Premier League. Him with Declan Rice in terms of ball recoveries in the midfield would be a little bit unfair. The two of them would be absolutely ridiculous when defending defensive transitions. This would allow Arsenal to push super high up the pitch on the press, maintain their attacks, but now they have that extra bit of quality. Declan Rice over Thomas Partey brings something different in terms of what he offers on the ball, and the same for Caicedo with Granit Xhaka. So you are upgrading in these areas, whilst also not losing any of the attributes which the other two had, which is the perfect way to recruit this summer. 
Add on top of that for his Nader, who is really in here for depth as a backup to Ben White, then I think Arsenal have got themselves a very tidy little transfer window right there. Now, obviously, they need other things as well. Potentially, a backup centre-back for the squad could be ideal. But in terms of if I was picking three areas which they need to improve, it would be those three positions, and it would be those three players to take Arsenal to that next level, to compete for the title once again, but also in the Champions League. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. What do you think of the likes of Fresneda, Declan Rice, Caicedo? Do you think they are affordable? Do you think Arsenal should make these moves happen to give Arsenal this team? Or do you think there are better options out there? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you in the next one.